Hi, my name is Heather, and welcome to another episode of Wacom Plus Cricut, my series where I show you how you can use your Wacom tablet to create projects for your Cricut. Before we start, I would like to give a huge thank you to Wacom for sending me this tablet and for sponsoring this video. Today, we're going to be creating a color your own pen case. And I think this is such a fun idea for back to school or even just to give as a gift to anyone who's creative. I went to Michael's and I picked up some supplies. So I got these pen cases or they could be makeup cases, crayon bags, colored pencil bags, whatever you want. I got Cricut infusible ink in black. And so this is what we're going to use to do the outlines that can then be colored in with like Sharpies or any kind of permanent marker. And then we have the Cricut heat resistant tape, just in case we need it to hold the infusible ink transfer sheets to the pouch. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. And this comes with three pouches, so you can use it for three different projects. It comes with two smaller pouches and one bigger pouch. So we can go ahead and use the smaller pouch for this tutorial. And for this one, we're gonna have to make sure that the SVG file is going to be the exact size that we want it. So that's gonna be very important for this one. So I'm going to take this pouch and I'm just gonna measure it. They also have the measurements on the package, but just in case it's like a little bit off or like some of it might not be easy to iron onto, let's measure it with our ruler. This seems to be about eight and three quarter inches wide by six inches high. So I'm going to go into Affinity Designer, which is what we're going to be using for this project. And the reason why we're doing that is because that is what we use for vector files. And vector files are really the best for Cricut because if we were to draw this as like a transparent PNG in Affinity Photo or some other program, then you're relying on Cricut Design Space to actually trace around the image and convert it to vector. So it might not turn out exactly how you intended. So that's why whenever you can, it's always going to be best to do it in vector. So I'm in Affinity Designer 2 right now, and I'm just going to create a new file. And I'm going to enter in those dimensions that I measured from my pouch. And it was 8.75 by six inches. And then you just wanna make sure that you have inches selected over on the right. And for the DPI, we're going to change it to 72. By setting the DPI to 72, we're making sure that the image is gonna come through as the correct size in Cricut Design Space. And then we can go ahead and click Create. I wanna use the theme of art for my design so that it can be used for colored pencils and markers and all that kind of stuff. So to keep this creative, I'm just going to do the word create. I think that's really fun and inspiring. So first I'm going to do my letters. And if you want to just hand draw your letters, you can do that. Or you can use a font. So I'm going to use a font for mine. So I'm going to click the artistic text tool. And then I'm just going to click and drag however big I want the text to be. Actually, I think it might be neat to have like each letter in a different font just to make it look a little creative and weird. So I'm going to do my letter C and then grab my move tool up here and I'm gonna move it over just so I can see it because I'm going to bring this menu down and pick some fonts. This is actually one of my favorites, a calling. So actually I'll use that for the C. I'll grab my artistic text tool again and I'll make the R. And by the way, I wouldn't usually recommend having six different fonts in a design, but I think this can be an exception because we're just trying to make it look fun and creative. One thing that I do like to try to do when I'm mixing fonts together like this is try to have all of the letters be similar thicknesses. And I think that makes it look a little bit better as far as like mixing fonts go. It might look a little too crazy if you have some fonts that are like super skinny and then some that are super thick. Now I'm done with my text, so I'm going to go ahead and expand the text and turn it into a shape. So I'm going to go to Layer, Convert to Curves, 
And now you can see that these are all shapes. And now I'm just going to combine them to make them all one shape so these overlapping parts won't get cut out. So I'm going to grab all of this and I'm just going to go to add. And now this is all one shape. So now I'm going to go ahead and draw around it. And I'm going to use my brush tool. I'm going to go to brushes. And I'm going to pick just a very basic pen, so solid pen with pressure. And I'll test it and see if I like the thickness. But it's not changing as I go harder. So I'm going to go up to where it says controller, and I'm going to put that to pressure. And I think I want it to be a little bit thicker than that. So I'm going to go up to width, and I'll bring that up. I'm going to draw some outlines of stuff because this is going to be similar to a coloring page. You're going to color it in with colors. So I'm basically going to make like a coloring book around the word create. It's pretty much just a free for all at this point. I'm just going to draw a bunch of random stuff. You can have like a theme to yours if you want, or you can just kind of draw a bunch of fun doodles, which is what I'm going to do. And after you draw something, if you want to edit it, you can grab your node tool and you can just move these little nodes around and you can even delete nodes so i'll press delete if i don't want it and that way you can really perfect your drawing Here's a little tip when you're drawing. I have showed this in other videos, but just in case you didn't see it, if you have some lines that are going through other lines and then you want to get rid of some of it, you can grab your node tool. So what we're going to do is cut out a portion of the line. So we're going to add a point where we want to cut it and then a point on the other part that we want to cut it. And then we're going to delete that portion out. So with this line selected with my node tool, I'm going to click to add a point where I want to cut it because I want the pencil to look like it's in front of the rainbow. And then the other point is already there. So I'll just keep that one. And then I'm just going to have this point selected and click on this action right here that says break curve. So I'm going to click that and then that's going to break up this curve right at that point. So now if I grab it, see it's not connected anymore. So we want to delete this portion. So then I'm going to grab this point and I'll do break curve. And then I can click on that point, but you might grab the other section of it. So just kind of set that over there. And then I'm going to grab this one. And now I have this whole curve selected. And now I can grab my move tool and I can just grab that one little section and delete it by clicking the delete button. So I'll do it again with this one. So I'm going to grab my node tool and I'm going to click the line to select it. And then I'm going to click where I want to add a point. There just happens to be another point right here. So this is the section I want to delete. Now I already have this point selected. So I'm going to do break curve. And then I'm going to select this point and I'm going to do break curve. Now I can grab my move tool and I'm going to grab that little section. I can pull it out and I can delete it. You can also duplicate something you've drawn if you go to edit, duplicate, and then you can move it somewhere else. I'm all done with my design now, so now I just need to convert it to shapes so I can bring it into Cricut Design Space. And if you want more information on why we have to do that, I do have a video and I will link to that in the cards. So I'm going to grab my select tool and I'm going to just grab everything. And then I'm going to go to layer, expand stroke. 
And now if I look in my layers panel, it's all curves and no strokes. I do see some weird parts here that I just need to fix. So for some reason, this part got really weird when it got converted. So I'm just going to grab my node tool and fix that. Affinity Designer doesn't convert everything to curves perfectly. So you might have to go in and touch up a few other things too. Like right here, it kind of goes past this part. I can just delete some of these nodes out. Now I have this how I want it. So I'm going to combine all of it into one shape. So I'm going to grab my move tool, select everything, and I'm going to go up here to where it says add, and I'm going to click that. And now this is all in shape. And if you look in the layers panel, you can see there's just one layer that says curves. Now, one other thing I want to show you is that when I drew this, if I select everything, you can see that the drawing does go past the size of the canvas here. So that actually would get exported. And we don't really want that because we want this to be the exact perfect size. So we're going to create a rectangle and just use it as a cookie cutter to cut out our design. And that way we can get rid of all that part on the outside. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm just going to make a rectangle the same size of the canvas. If you want to set it exactly, you can go over to transform and you can set the dimensions over here, but this is good enough for me. So I'm going to have this here and then I'm going to select everything and I'm going to do intersect. So that's going to keep all of the places where they overlap. So if I click that, then now you can see all we have left is the design. So now I can go to File, Export, and I'm going to pick SVG, and I'll do SVG for Export. The area will be the whole document, and then we can go to Advanced. And instead of Use Document Resolution, I'm going to do Use DPI, and I'm going to make that 72. And I just do this because even though we set it to 72 DPI in the beginning, this just makes totally sure that it does definitely export at the right resolution. Then I'm going to scroll down and uncheck set view box, and then I'm going to click export. Now we can go to Cricut Design Space, and I'm in a new document here, so I'm just going to go to upload, upload image, browse. I'm going to grab pencilcase.svg and open and upload. Now we can just click it and do add to canvas. And now you can see this is the right size here. So now this is ready to cut out of the infusible ink and iron on to our pouch. Now we're just going to click make it. If we look at the placement on the mat, we can actually move this a little bit and that'll give us a little bit of extra room around the edges here. And I always like to make the material a little bit bigger. So we can cut like a 10 inch by 7 inch piece of the material. We are going to need to turn mirror on for this. And click continue. My Cricut is connected and I set my dial to custom material. And now I'm going to click browse all materials. And I'll search for infusible ink. Let's bookmark it. And I'm going to select it. So now we have that selected and I'll just leave it on the default pressure. And let's go ahead and get this out. And I'm going to cut this to 10 by seven. This is 10 by seven now, and I'm going to put it on my mat. This is my standard grip mat. So I'm just gonna take the cover off and I'll put my infusible ink sheet down. You don't want to touch the infusible ink sheet too much because the ink will start coming up from it. And now I'm just going to run this through. Now this is all cut and I'm going to flip it over and take the infusible ink sheet off. And now I'm going to weed this. So first I'm going to roll it up so that it cracks. And this is only something that you need to do with infusible ink. 
This isn't normally something that you would do for Cricut projects. And now I'm just going to peel off any of the part that's not my design. So everything that's around your design is what you're going to want to peel up. From what I've heard, you shouldn't use the actual weeding tool that you usually use for the Cricut. You shouldn't use that with infusible ink because it will pick up some of the ink and transfer it to the backing sheet. So I'm just using my hands for this. Here's my zipper pouch and I cut a piece of cardboard to fit inside of it just so I could protect the back layer so the ink doesn't go through. So I'm just going to stick this in. And I have my Easy Press, and I actually have the original Easy Press, which only goes up to 360 instead of the recommended 400. But I have seen that people have used it and they've gotten good results with it. So I'm going to use my original Easy Press at 360, and I'll do it for two minutes because since the temperature is lower than the recommended, then I'm going to do it for a longer amount of time. But if you have one of the newer ones that go up to a higher temperature, then I would say definitely use those settings instead. I'm going to preheat the fabric. And then I'm going to let it cool. Now that it's cooled, I'm going to place this down. I'm going to use some of my heat resistant tape to tape this to the pouch. Just to keep it in place. This is the butcher paper that came with the infusible ink sheet so I'll set that down and now we can go. So I'm gonna press this for two minutes. Okay now we can take this off. Here is the finished pencil case. As you can see, it didn't press just on these edges here because of that seam. But overall, I think it looks really nice. And I love how the infusible ink works. It's just like right into the fabric, which is amazing. So now this is ready to color. I hope you liked this project. If you have any questions, you can let me know in the comments, or as always, you can email me at heather at heathercash.com. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so I know to make more videos like this. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!